What's going on, everybody? This is another episode of the Eye Test Takes podcast. This is week 14, episode 14 of the podcast. Uh, recapping three games this week, unfortunately. I was cut short a little bit. I, and I just had a lot of things to do this past weekend and, and uh, also the beginning of this week. So I wasn't able to get in that, that fourth game that I, I actually usually like to do. Um, but because I... I'm going to be without doing a fourth game this week. I'm going to leave you guys with a little bit of something, kind of a, a little bit of a state of the NFL, uh, just in my opinion, um, to end off the podcast. So that'll be at the end there. Um, but the slate of games that I watched this weekend was Philadelphia versus New Orleans Saints, Buffalo versus Pittsburgh, and Cleveland versus Baltimore. Uh, let's just hop right into this. Let's get into the first game that I watched this weekend, which was Philadelphia versus New Orleans. And I'll start with right off the bat, uh, you know, everybody's anticipating this, this new Jalen Hurts-led uh, offense for the Eagles. And right off the bat, you can tell there's just a whole different energy to the team with Jalen Hurts as the starting quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. And uh, it, it's very apparent. Uh, they come out and they, they feel like they have a little bit more juice. Uh, there's that spark there. Like it's like the first game of the season for everybody on the team, even though obviously we're super late in the season now. Uh, they almost got like a, a youthful vibe because I guess their QB is is young and he's unproven and they just wanted to see what he could do. And uh, he went out there and actually had a, a good game. Like you can't take anything away from him. Um, he went out there and played well. Obviously the Eagles won. Everybody saw that. It was a, it was a pretty big upset, upset considering uh, New Orleans – was you know the number one seed in the NFC at the time. Um, New Orleans defense coming into the game was probably the toughest defense in all of football, uh, you know, st- statistics wise. And Jalen Hurts put it on them. Um, the offense was uh, was very basic and simple. Uh, they were getting him some easy throws in the beginning of the game. Uh, they didn't ask him to do a whole lot necessarily, uh, but he made plays whenever they were there. Uh, you, you really got to give him credit for that. I mean, the the one thing that like I did notice because as I've said for the past few weeks and pretty much all season, the Eagles team is just not a good one uh, in pretty much every facet. Uh, offensive lines is is not very great. Wide receivers not good. Coaching staff has been very bland and and not so great this this season considering play calling, play design, stuff of that nature, um, and. At the very least, Jalen Hurts was able to cover up some of those holes uh, in the offense. And it was very apparent because whenever, I mean, he he would drop back and he would, you know, go to his first read. If that wasn't there, he might would would go to that second read. And even if he did go to the second read, he was out. He was out of the pocket. He was not willing to take a sack. And that's exactly what the quarterback of the Eagles has to do at this point in time to make the offense even uh, somewhat uh, successful because that offensive line gives them very little time to throw the ball uh, and get stuff done. Um, so he was he was running for first downs. You could obviously see the difference between the athleticism of Jalen Hurts and the athleticism of Carson Wentz if you've watched previous games this, this year. Uh, I mean, Carson Wentz is able to get out of some of those, you know, tight spots when the the offensive line collapses on them. Uh, But Jalen Hurts just he just has the speed and athleticism to to get out there, uh, turn the corner and get some first downs where it looks like you're going to get a two yard loss or more. And he turns them into a a positive gain. And that's that's paramount for an offense, especially that one that's that's struggling right now, doing the very basic uh, principles of offensive play calling um so yeah he, he looked pretty good um I will say though I'm not like a million percent sold on Jalen Hurts at this point um like I said last week we have a four game sample size here this is one game uh I want to see how defenses you know kind of counter what they saw on the film this week and weeks uh you know coming up here uh we're going to be playing some decent teams the Eagles are and I want to see how he can react to some of the things that defenses have seen on film. 
Uh, I just want to see maybe the, the offense expand a little bit more. Uh, you know, Doug Peterson get a little bit more creative with the way they can use Hurts. Um, and I just want to – I my thing is I'm not, like, super confident that Doug Peterson and that coaching staff can expand the offense enough with him. And based on the, some of his limitations, and he does have them, uh, like I said before, like last week, I, I think people are going to realize that Jalen Hurts does not have the greatest arm in the world. Uh, he did look very accurate for the most part on Sunday, um, but he was missing some throws here and there. Um, but I just, I just want to wait and see. I'm not, I'm not hopping on any bandwagon at this point. Uh, it's just, like I said, wait and see mode. Uh, the next thing I want to get to is New Orleans here. Uh, basically. Taysom Hill's not very good, uh, and that New Orleans offense cannot operate from behind. Uh, they, they've played the last few weeks against not very good teams, and especially the, the Broncos team that did not have a QB present. Uh, so we didn't have a great feel for how that offense would be when they're not basically within the game for the most part. Uh, the Eagles went up 17-0, to and that really just – it just stifled that whole offense for New Orleans because they're so used to just being able to do some some QB power, uh, just hand the ball off to Kamara and Latavius Murray, uh, short passes here and there, and then opening up a little bit because Taysom does have a pretty decent arm, uh, but it just they are not built, especially with Hill as the QB, to come from behind at any point in the game. And that showed pretty, you know, easily there in that Eagles game. Um, they just they didn't look the same at all. Uh, but and that that's concerning in, in general because we just still don't know when Drew Brees is going to come back and when he comes back is he going to be fully healthy like for sure? Because uh, you know th- there could be the chance where you know in the next couple weeks they still are without Brees and they lose more games and they're in you know trouble considering playoff seeding uh where they go from the one seed in this game lose it and then the packers become the one seed so they're just slowly slipping down the seeding uh and i don't know if if sean payton and that organization are gonna want to wait around too much longer for drew Brees to continue to get healthy and that might hurt them in the long run too because if you rush drew Brees back and he breaks some more bones or something like that i mean or some more ribs it could be disastrous for the rest of the season. And I, I've i never been super confident in that New Orleans team, even though the defense has rounded into form and pretty much all their offensive weapons have uh, gotten healthy so far. Uh, I still am not super sold on them either. So we'll just have to see what's going on with, uh, with the Saints for the rest of the season. But... I think they're they're clearly not the best team in the NFC, and I'll get to that a little bit later as well. So the next game that I watched was Buffalo versus Pittsburgh, um, and I think this game was more about how proficient the Buffalo Bills are on offense. Um, Brian Dayball continues to shine as the offensive coordinator there in Buffalo, uh, and he's just getting the best out of Josh Allen right now, and Josh Allen's playing out of his mind. Uh and, and really, I want to say that the – I mean, the Buffalo offense was was obviously very, very good. But this Pittsburgh defense coming into this game was a little beat up. They've also had to play three games in 12 days. So that Pittsburgh defense and team in general were probably a little bit sluggish. Um, so, I mean, I, I do put that into account whenever I'm thinking about them in, you know, totality. Um, but that Pittsburgh defense – with Joe Hayden being out for this game, that was huge because Stephon Diggs went berserk on on that defense. Um, Robert Spillane was out in the game. Uh, Bud Dupree, obviously, is going to be out for the rest of the season, so that pass rush gets gets nicked a little bit. And you saw it that without Bud Dupree, uh, that pass rush can tire down pretty easily by the fourth quarter. Uh, they just don't have the depth that they once did, and they don't have, you know, the dogs ready to go, uh, you know, that can kind of come in waves at you like some of the other good defensive lines in, in all of football. They're, I think they're still probably, you know, 
top two best defensive lines in all of football, but it's just the depth is, is where they're struggling right now. Um, and then I think I'm going to just kind of end. I mean, Buffalo won the game. I It was close, but like it felt like Pittsburgh did not have – that great of a chance in in the first place. Uh, it, it just the way the vibe of the game. It, it would just seem like Buffalo had control for the most part. Uh, and then Pittsburgh, man, that their their running game is just non-existent, and that is not going to bode well for them going into the postseason. And they really got to figure that out uh, because if they continue to be super one-dimensional, defenses are just going to key in on on. Big Ben, and they're going to get after him, and he cannot move anymore. I know he used to be Big Ben in the old where he could throw three people off of him and scramble for five, six-yard gain or a first down here and there, but he is not the same uh, in the mobility department. So they really got to get that run game going so that pass game can continue to, to open some things up, but it's just not looking so great for Pittsburgh right now. And I know – I don't know if it was last week or the week before that, I was saying Chiefs, Steelers, AFC championship game, you know, chalk it up. I, I'll i be completely honest, I don't think that's happening anymore. Pittsburgh, and unless they, they really flip the switch and get a run game, uh, it's going to be tough for them to get through that AFC playoffs because there are some teams that are, are rearing their head right now. They're getting hot when it matter, matters the most right now coming into the, into the postseason. And they're going to be trouble for the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, especially with how banged up the defense is getting and that offense is just a little bit uh, lackluster right now. It's going to be interesting to see how they finish the season out. All right, so let's get on to the next game, which is you know Pittsburgh's AFC North rivals, the Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens. This game, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I did not watch this live. I was getting a little bit of FOMO because I was kind of checking Twitter as it was going on. Uh, I was not able to watch it, mostly because it was my choice. I was watching Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, do I regret not watching the football game? No. Uh, <laughs> I love Harry Potter. I'm a nerd. But anyways, no. So I got to, w- to watch it, just rewatch it or whatever today. And uh, it was by far one of the... F- most fun games of the season to watch. It was a great game. Start to finish, even though the the first half was a little bit slow, uh, and I kind of had an inkling of what was going on because, like I said, I was checking Twitter while I was watching Harry Potter, um, and I saw some some tweets here and there, and I kind of saw some highlights before I was able to watch the the full thing in totality. Um, but, man, what is what was it a good game? I think considering all things – in general, this is probably the best game that Baker Mayfield's ever played in the NFL. He really put pulled his big boy pants up and was like, I'm going to take control of this offense. Uh, obviously, it was still super balanced because of Stefanski and that, that run game. But, but Baker Mayfield was throwing missiles, man. That guy, like I said last week, he can make every throw and he is for real. Like his arm is for real. It's really all just mental for him when it comes down to like him making mistakes, uh, because like I said, like he he's got all the physical ability. He he really needs to be a great quarterback in the NFL. Um, but yeah, Baker was absolutely unbelievable in this game, throwing the ball all around, using every weapon to his disposal. Uh, and Stavansky once again pl- like, called a great game. So kudos to him for that. Um, I will say like. This game had that playoff feel, and I really hope there's some way that in the AFC playoffs we can get a another Pittsburgh-Baltimore, a Pittsburgh-Cleveland, or a Cleveland versus Baltimore again because those matchups are so much fun to watch, and there's so much history and rivalry there that those, those are some of the best matchups in all of football. And this game really basically just showed it all. Uh, Lamar in the end here basically was just a little bit too much, uh, and he got the job done at the end, throwing that touchdown pass to Marquise Hollywood Brown. Uh, even though Brown had a ton of drop issues in this game, uh, he's been chirping a lot during the season this year, talking about they haven't been using him as much, and then 
<laughs> he goes out and plays pretty terrible, makes up for it a little bit there with the game-winning touchdown. Uh, well, game, you know, basically, I guess, tying slash put them up by a little bit, and then Cleveland went back down. Anyways, Lamar went back down the field with the last possession there. Justin Tucker, 55-yard field goal, ends the game. Justin Tucker's cold as ice. He's the man. Um, but, yeah, this, this game – was so much fun to watch. I really enjoyed it. I mean, Nick Chubb is ridiculous. Kareem Hunt's ridiculous. They have literally, I mean, two starting running backs. Like, and it's it's very obvious, but like, it's just crazy to think about that they have two starting caliber running backs in their backfield, and they utilize them almost perfectly because they both get a lot of work in during the game, and there still feels like there's like just enough. You know, there's there's plenty of pass plays for Baker Mayfield to, you know, do as well. So that that offense is awesome right now. Uh, the Browns defense, they got a little bit uh, burnt up in this one by Lamar, but that happens. Lamar is going to have those games where he just runs all over people. Um, but man, Miles Garrett is still a monster, and that defense is still going to be tough against a lot of the teams in the AFC, especially in the playoffs. So. That's going to be really fun to watch going forward. Um, that's pretty much all I got for that game. Uh, that was that was sick. Um, but, yeah, let me just get to what I was talking about, kind of alluding to in the beginning of this podcast, that I kind of want to do a little bit of a state of the NFL for me. Um, I really believe at this point in time, from what I've seen so far, and, of course, there's some games left in the season, so this is not, like, set in stone, but, like, I – I can only see it trending in this direction. Uh, but I don't think anybody in the AFC is going to sniff the Chiefs. Uh, obviously, this weekend, people saw it. Pat Mahomes throws three interceptions against the Miami Dolphins, and they still go on to win the game. Uh, that that team is just so good no matter what, and it's they, they're so scary. Um, I Like I said beforehand – Pittsburgh, I thought they were going to be, you know, set in stone to go play against the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game, and I don't know if that's a reality anymore. Um, I think, honestly, at this point, the best team or the the team that will challenge the Chiefs the most in the AFC is probably going to be the Buffalo Bills, um, and they've already played, like I said a couple weeks ago, and I mean. It really wasn't that much of a competition. But I do believe Buffalo has gotten better since that game. Uh, the, the defense has gotten a lot more healthy. Uh, the offense is really rounding into form to where, I mean, every player on that offense is getting involved and scoring touchdowns. I mean, they're scoring a lot of points at this point. Um, so that's going to be fun to see the AFC come down to who, basically whoever's going to play the Chiefs in the, in the championship game. And by saying that, I'm probably like jinxing the crap out of the Chiefs because that's just what happens with me. Um, but then on the a or the the NFC side, I should say, I really think the best team in the NFC right now, and I might regret saying this at some point because they could just their defense could just completely fall off a cliff because they're very capable of it. But I think it's the Packers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is just playing at, at such a high level right now. That offense just looks so easy for him to operate and just. The things they're doing and the things he's doing, especially at his age, and it's just unbelievable what he's able to do. I think he should probably be the MVP uh, of the league considering – I mean, and Pat Mahomes is right there, but Pat Mahomes has way more weapons, and Aaron Rodgers is basically having to do it on his own. I say do it on his own, but he's got Devontae Adams, which is, I mean, probably – I mean, consensus top five – wide receiver in all of football at the very least, whatever your opinion of, of Devontae Adams may be, he's up there. Um, but, yeah, that that team I think is probably right now the best team in the NFC, uh, especially if that defense can continue to be just kind of middle of the road right now. And, I mean, a lot – I feel like Seattle, if they were to play Green Bay right now, they would still lose because Seattle's defense is still not playing so great. Um, 
they got back on track a little bit this weekend, beating the dog crap out of the Jets, which, you know, that's always a nice thing to, to get under your belt. Just just see your offense operate at a high level just to go into, you know, the rest of the season and have confidence about that. Um, but I still think Packers would probably beat the Seahawks at this point. I think the Packers would probably still beat, I mean, even though Tampa Bay beat them earlier in the season, Tampa Bay might be a tough a tough out in the playoffs, especially if they play the way they did yesterday uh, against Minnesota, even though Minnesota probably should have won that game anyways because Dan Bailey was just so bad. I mean, it was it was ugly to watch. Like, literally every kick was off by a mile. It was really weird. Um, but, yeah, I just, I just think right now the crash course for the Super Bowl is probably going to be Green Bay and the Chiefs. And I would absolutely adore that that Super Bowl. I would have a tough time, uh, you know, thinking about who I would prefer to win that one. Uh, basically, like, just extending the legacy of, you know, two of my favorite quarterbacks in the league right now. Um, it, it would be an unbelievable, fun game to watch, especially, I, I think, probably um, – at least in my opinion, I don't know about yours, but probably the two most gifted, uh, like physically gifted quarterbacks of all time, uh, Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes. And I know it's a little early for Pat, but like, I mean, what you're seeing now is absolutely historic. So if, if you don't see that he's going to be probably by the end of his career, the best quarterback to have ever done it, I don't know how to help you. Um, and to this point, I think Aaron Rodgers has been – the best quarterback to ever do it. Uh, and that's not – I know he only has one Super Bowl and the whole Brady thing with six. I mean, there, there's – I understand the argument, but I, in my opinion, it's just Aaron Rodgers is slash was the GOAT and Patrick Mahomes is slowly – actually, not even slowly, like quickly becoming – that figurehead, especially if he's able to get some more Super Bowls quickly in the you know the prime of his career, um, but yeah, it's going to be super fun to watch, and I'm excited for the rest of this NFL season. I'm excited to see what happens with the Eagles for the rest of the season. Even though you know, like I said, I I wish the best for Wentz, but like it, if Jalen Hurts ends up being the guy, it is what it is, and we got to move on. Um, but I would like to see Wentz get another chance um, if it's. In Philadelphia, awesome. If it's not, awesome. I, I'll be honest, though, if Wentz goes elsewhere and has success or more success than he did in Philadelphia, I'm going to be physically sick to my stomach. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, but, yeah, I appreciate you guys listening. Uh, this is pretty much the end of the podcast here. Follow us at iTest Takes on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, I appreciate my producer, Weston Barnhart, editing and doing everything for me here. He's the man, and I will talk to you guys later. See ya.